For more on this, let's bring in Larry Kudlow. You watch the numbers very closely. Let me, let's hear from you, your reaction to this number coming in at 8.3%. Well, the first reaction is it's a stronger number than what Wall Street consensus was suggesting. And by the way, stronger inflation number is a theme. It's now, what, 15 or 16 month theme, and it's going to continue. There is no let up in the inflation rate. And I just want to note a couple of things here. Uh, food prices are spir uh, sky skyrocketing, really out of control, up 12 percent at an annual rate for the past three months, 9.4 percent overall. Um, the CPI itself in the past three months up close to 10 percent, 9.9 percent at an annual rate. And if you take out Vladimir Putin, uh, energy and, and food prices, you're still up about six and a quarter percent, which kind of puts the lie to what President Biden was saying yesterday. I mean, this is going to be, you know, buckle your seatbelts. This is a problem. The problem's not going away. Uh, you know, you get higher base from last year. The comparisons are a little tougher, but you're still running over 8 percent overall. And the short run numbers, as I said, almost 10 percent. So that tells you the trend line is going to be very, very difficult. Food and energy difficult, gasoline difficult, diesel difficult. And at one point I want to make is this idea that really it's just energy. It's not just energy. Uh, as a hallmark of a virulent inflation rate, what you see in the CPI index is all prices, virtually all prices are rising, not just some individual prices, but all prices. And that's what lifts up the index to these rapid monthly increases yeah. and yearly increases. Larry, so Larry got a problem. Yeah. You turn, just away, have a problem. Yeah, turn away from the economics for a moment. Look at the political perspective here. I, I think the president yesterday, he was softening the beachhead. I mean, Dana, you pointed out a moment ago, some of the things he said in his language depends on who you ask. I'm not going to predict it. But by the end of this year, some say it's going to be it's going to increase next year. Uh, that, there's a bit of a tell in some of that language yesterday. However, there is also this call for eight from that same speech. I think our policies help, not hurt. Think about what they say. The vast majority of the of the uh, uh, of the economists think that this is going to be a real tough problem to solve, but it's not because of spending. That last point is the point to debate. Because they're going to go to their end I days mean, and saying that w w what they did a year ago did not matter. Well, look, they can say it. I mean, President played the blame game yesterday. He won't own any of these problems. And he's coming back with more spending. Look, you had prominent Democrat economists and Republican economists a year ago uh, predict rising inflation because of huge social spending, uh, aggregate demand increasing, deficit finance, too much borrowing, and too much money printing. And then, you know, you had the war against fossil fuels uh, at exactly the wrong time. So what I heard yesterday from uh, Mr. Biden is more of the same. His progressive agenda, he wants to continue spending. He wants to continue environmental restrictions on fossil fuels and pipelines and virtually every other infrastructure, by the way. It'll kill roads, bridges and tunnels. It'll even stop wind turbines. He wants to and he wants to raise taxes. I mean, he made a pitch yesterday, right? He blamed excess profits. He blamed um, uh, poultry companies. He blamed oil and gas companies. They're making too much money, so they're going to look after that. There's never been one single charge, specific charge on that business. So, and then he wants to increase taxes across the board on corporations and uh, successful earners and, you know, that, that, confiscate wealth nowhere, with though. unrealized capital gains. I mean, come on. You, here, the tax hikes and the environmental restrictions are suppressing the supply side of the economy. Not enough goods, okay? And this spending increases the demand side of the economy. Too much cash. So that is a combination. Everybody knows this. Uh, Dana Perino knows this, too. <laughs> if you are going to spend more than you can produce, well, prices have to go oh. up.
And the obvious solution is to spend less and produce more and create incentives to produce more across the board. He's operating just the reverse. And I want to say this. I know it may sound partisan, but I have to say it. This is a progressive agenda. Okay, Gingrich calls it the big government socialist agenda. This is central controlling. Okay, this is disdain for the workings of the uh, free market enterprise system, and it's gotten him in trouble. So you look at your polls, and only about one third of the people mm -hmm. approve of his performance on inflation and uh, the economy. Two thirds disapprove. Mm -hmm. It's a complete collapse of the progressive agenda. Larry, thank you. Good quick analysis on that. Progressive for now. You wait to see what happens toward the end of November, right? Thank uh, you. Thank you, Ultra Larry. MAGA. I want to, where do I sign? I want to ultra <laughs> you, MAGA. You want that I already name, may no, be ultra MAGA. You, you want that name tag. <laughs> I can't low. take it. Ultra MAGA. <laughs> <laughs> see you at 4 o'clock, Fox Business. Thank you, Larry.